Hi everyone, this is our channel Around My Story. Please like, share and subscribe. Hello, I'm Sarah. Ever heard of a phobia before? Don't worry, it's not contagious or anything. It just means you're scared of something in particular. Places, people, things. I have a phobia, but I don't like to talk about it. And I definitely don't want to be seen in that state. I was in my second year at college. I had been very busy that semester because we had a lot of assignments. And it was fine, I mean, I liked studying and completing tasks. But I was never a nerd or a geek. No. I like to dress nicely too. I have my own fashion and style. It wasn't easy making friends though. There were two types of people at my school. Smart nerds who couldn't care less how they dress. And complete airheads who dress nice. I didn't fit in either one of those groups. So I basically kept to myself. Until one day... I got assigned to do a task with a girl and a boy, Jane and Kyle. They didn't look nerdy at all. And I thought to myself, oh great, looks like I'll be doing all the work. But when we started talking about the project, they didn't just sit there or toss ridiculous retorts. All three of us were having an actual conversation about the topic. I was so thrilled. It finally seemed like I belonged somewhere. We became friends and did everything together. We could tell each other anything. Well, not everything. I had one secret from my friends. I never told them I had a phobia. Anyway, a year later, Jane moved to Germany with her parents. She was going to finish college there. So it was just Kyle and I now. All through college, we were the best of friends. We even did our graduation project together. On graduation day, Kyle and I were supposed to go out for dinner. He wouldn't tell me where, said it was a surprise. And what a surprise it was. He had picked the highest tower in the whole city to eat dinner at the very top. I don't have a problem with high places in particular. In fact, I'm sure I'll love the view if I ever make it to the top. No, I had a problem with the elevator. A phobia, to be precise. So we were standing at the base of the tower and Kyle was happily listing all the great features and restaurants up there, but I didn't hear any of it. I was too busy fretting, frozen to the spot, desperately trying to find a way out of the situation. I couldn't say no to Kyle, who was all excited to go up the tower, so I clenched it in and tried my best to stay calm. We got in the elevator and the doors shut. I couldn't control what came after that. I was terrified, screaming and shouting hysterically, banging on the walls, then falling to the ground. Of course, I don't actually remember any of it. Kyle told me later on. The last thing I remember was the elevator doors shutting close. When I came to, I was at the hospital. Kyle was sitting by my bed looking worried. When he saw that I woke up and that I was feeling fine, he started laughing at me, saying, Why didn't you tell me you had a phobia? I felt ridiculous and started laughing too. And then, out of nowhere, he proposed. It was his plan all along, although he pictured it at the top of the tower. All that happened three years ago. We're married now, and we have a baby girl. I'm being treated for my phobia. It's not completely gone, but I'm way better now. Apparently, hiding my problems never solves them. I'll have to face them, sooner or later. Traffic is crazy. I'm checking my makeup for the millionth time using my pocket mirror because I would like my interview to go as perfect as could be. I want to impress the interviewer because Posh Magazine has always been my dream job. I applied as an intern, and I know hundreds of ladies my age would kill for the chance that I have right now. Oh, the green lights are finally on. Great. I will make it just in time. But then, a motorcycle just caught my lane. I was able to hit the brake, but I bumped my head in the steering wheel. And that's gonna leave a mark. I opened the car window so I could yell at the motorcycle guy. But just like the perfect special effects in movies, the wind blew so hard. The papers, including my resume, flew out of my car. Without second thoughts, I jumped out of the car to get the papers that were flying away. Then I absentmindedly crossed lanes. I was almost hit by not just one but countless cars. Then my phone rang. Great! It's the interviewer trying to know where I am and if I am coming for my scheduled interview. As I took out my mobile phone from my back to answer the call, a random guy ran over my direction and quickly snatched my phone. Instinctively, I ran towards his direction. Hey, give that back to me! I didn't care about the cost of my phone. I just care about my contacts. 
I'm still thinking about my interview. This is my only priority at the moment. Then just like a hero, the motorcycle guy chased the snatcher and he was able to catch him. The police were able to take care of the snatcher, then the motorcycle guy took the pleasure of giving me back my phone. Hi Miss Beautiful, here's your precious phone. I want to say thank you but I'm pissed at him so I just stormed out like a kid throwing tantrums. I just heard him yell, you're welcome. I went back to my car and rushed to the building where the Posh Magazine office was located. My perfect outfit is now ruined. My white dress and my shoes got dirt due to my encounter earlier. My hair in a bun got loosened up. My mascara got smudged. I'm pretty sure my lipstick is messed up as well. I would love to go to the ladies room but there is no time. People are staring at me and they must think that I'm such a shameless person for applying here looking like this. I chatted with the manager and I explained what happened to me. Nothing can stop me from being a part of this company. I told them that if it means that I have to do coffee runs and countless errands every day, it will be my pleasure to do it. They loved my spirit and they hired me. They gave me a tour of the office. I saw where the signature clothes are kept. I also saw the studio where the photo shoots happen. Oh my god, this is like a dream. The manager asked me to take down notes because I will be the one to give the tour to visitors next time. I was hoping to meet the president of the company because I heard she's like Miranda from The Devil Wears Prada. I'm challenging myself to woo her just like what Anne Hathaway did. But I reminded myself that my life is not a movie. A perfect example would be just like what happened to me earlier. I came so prepared but I still almost lost my chance for this job because of one unfortunate event. I parked my car in the basement of the building and I needed to rush somewhere because I have a date. I needed to change my clothes and to freshen up because I don't look exactly my best right now. Then my phone rang. It was Mark. It's our first date and maybe he's just trying to check how I am and if the interview went well. But then I got sad when he said that he needed to cancel our date because he has some kind of work emergency. I had no choice but to put on a smile and pretend it was alright. No, it's fine, don't worry about me. Next time, maybe. I just went out of the building and went to the nearby coffee shop. I treated myself because I deserve a me time with a nice cup of coffee. It is the last day where I could have the luxury of time. Just a couple of minutes after settling in, my phone rang. I answered it immediately. It's the manager. Hello? She asked if I'm still nearby because they would need me to start today. They're asking me to get the measurements of a certain male model that will do a photo shoot the day after tomorrow. I asked the barista to make my cup to go because it would be such a shame to waste a much needed cup of coffee. I rushed to the office and I was there in no time. I started immediately and acted like a pro. I did not let the manager notice that I have zero idea of what I'm doing. I don't know how to measure a body, but I checked a few videos online. Good thing I'm a quick learner. There are lots of guys in the room, and it's like raining muscles in here. This must be heaven for most girls. Well, I do enjoy the view, but I constantly reminded myself that I'm here to work and I will not do anything to ruin this opportunity, so I needed to focus. I was able to get the measurements of the male models. It was not that hard and I really got to enjoy brushing my skin to their biceps. Okay, Kulina, focus. The manager entered the room and asked if I was done. I gave her the list of measurements and I saw in her eyes that she was impressed. But when I asked her for my next task, she said, Dear, you're not done yet. I'm confused. Mr. Pierre is arriving soon. He's the most popular ramp model in the industry. And my heart just pounded. I got so excited. 
I will have the honor of being the one to get the measurements of the male supermodel of the company, and I think that is such a big deal. Oh, there he is. When I saw him, my jaw dropped. He was the motorcycle guy. He greeted the manager and vice versa, and then he greeted me. Hey, it's you. The manager asked if we knew each other. Before I could answer, he saved me the trouble. He told her what happened earlier, and she complimented him for what he has done. You're such a hero. The manager left us alone, so I already took his measurements, which lasted for less than 10 minutes. I couldn't help but notice that he's got this wicked grin on his face the whole time. I just smirked at him. Is that really how you'd like to thank me? By frowning at me? I forced a smile, and I know I looked silly. Hey, if you cannot say thank you, just be nice, he said. I walked away from him because, to be honest, I don't know how to deal with him. I am pissed at him because I almost didn't make it. But what are the chances that my first assignment will involve him? Odd, I know. If you would not stop walking away, I will tell the manager that you wrote to me. No more second thoughts, I stopped walking. I felt like he was walking near my direction. He talked to me. Are you really not gonna thank me? Is that what you want? Then thanks, I said sarcastically. Come on, you need to make it up to me, or else I'll tell your manager. I cut him off before he could say anything else. Enough, what do you want? He just laughed at me, then said, I want you to have a cup of coffee with me. Um, no thanks. I raised my cup and said, See, I'm having one right now. He conceded and asked me for dinner instead. I know he's the type of guy who will not stop unless he gets what he wants, which is time to spend with me. I went home, took a bath, dressed up, put on light makeup. I don't want to be overdressed. He might think that I'm making too much effort for him. He picked me up at exactly 7 p.m. and we had dinner at a nice steakhouse. Well, he seemed different than our first encounter. He's actually a gentleman. A lot of people are staring at us because maybe my date looks so good. I feel so ordinary beside him. You look wonderful, he said. I just smiled because I felt like he was sincere about it. After the main course, he ordered some wine and we talked all night about our lives. His name is Elia Pierre. I've learned that he's been a model since he was 18. He is 22 now, I'm 21, not bad. I suddenly forgot about my frustrations with Mark. Good thing he's not my boyfriend yet. I realized that I have so many options, especially now that I'm working 